What's up my friends, it's Mike again, glad to have you guys back. So for the longest time, I've been using these two keyboards, the Logitech MX Keys Mini for work and the Logitech G915 10 Keyless for gaming. And today is very exciting because Logitech has just launched a few new products and it is this Logitech MX Mechanical keyboard. So I think this is like a perfect hybrid between work and gaming and it's gonna make your typing experience that much more enjoyable with the mechanical switches. And they also updated my favorite mouse which is the MX Master 3 and this is the 3S. And in this video, I partnered up with Logitech and got all the new products here to show you guys what they're all about. So we have here the MX Mechanical full-size keyboard and then there's a mini version of it as well. The keyboards come in three types of switches, the blue switches, the red switches, and the brown switches. So in today's video, we'll be going over the differences in the keyboard layouts, the different switches, and all the new features in both the keyboard and mouse. So hopefully this video will help you decide which is the next best upgrade for your setup. So first, we're gonna start off with the keyboards. This is the MX Mechanical Mini. And for size comparison, this is the MX Mechanical full-sized keyboard. So obviously it's bigger because of the numpad over here. So the full-size keyboard is a great option if you do a lot of work with numbers. If you're an accountant or work with spreadsheets a lot, I think it is essential. And the mini version is a great option as well if you don't need the numpad because I think it puts your mouse hand in a more natural position when you're using it. Versus with the full-size keyboard, your mouse hand is kind of stretched over to the right a bit. But the other difference you'll see is that the easy switch buttons are over here for the mini and they are over here on the full-sized keyboard. On the full-sized keyboard, you do get the option to increase or decrease your screen brightness over here, whereas you don't have it on the mini. And you also get these two buttons over here to go backwards or forwards on your music. Although they're missing on the mini, you can actually go in Logitech software, the Logi Options Plus, and you can configure them and customize them to whatever that you want later on. But besides that, the keyboard layout is pretty much the same. So this is the MX Mini keyboard that I've been using for a long time and I'm glad to see that they kept the dictation button, the emoji button, screen capture, mic mute on and off button. The new feature that they added is this search button over here on both keyboards and this light button which changes the backlighting and all the patterns and stuff which I'll show you guys later on. The other new thing about the keyboard are these adjustable legs on the back of the keyboard that you can prop up to change the typing angle. Whereas with the MX MX Keys Mini, it doesn't have that option. You'll notice that the keyboards are thicker as well versus the MX Keys line. And I think that's totally okay because in this, they have the mechanical switches. So these are low profile mechanical switches. They are very easy to press and it doesn't take that much effort. So typing on it, it just feels good. So over here on this keyboard, if we take out the keycaps, I got the brown ones over here. And then on the here, we got the blue. And if we make space for another keyboard over here, we have the red switches. And a big part of why people are switching to mechanical keyboards is for the feel so that whatever that you do, it feels better, you enjoy what you're doing more and all that stuff. So they all sound and feel different. So with the blue switches, it has a tactile clicky sound and it sounds like this. And it's usually a great option for people who love typing, but if you want a quieter option, you have the brown and red switches. With the brown switches, there's a tactile feeling as well when you press on it, but it's very, very quiet, so you can't really hear it, and it sounds like this. So it's great for people who want that feel but don't want to disturb anyone else in the room. And then we have the red switches which does not have any tactile feeling. It's smooth going down. You can only feel it when it bottoms out. And it sounds like this. Red is awesome if you want the smoothest typing experience. And now we're going to do a more in-depth typing test so that you can truly see the differences in the different switches and keyboards.
along, let's talk about the new features of the backlighting. So they kept the smart illumination in the keyboards. And what this is, is that when it senses your hands approaching the keyboard, the lights will automatically light up. And when you're not using the keyboard, the lights will automatically turn off. Also, the sensor detects the light around the keyboard. So if you're in a bright environment, it will prevent the backlight from turning on. So the smart part of it is to really help you save power and use the keyboard for longer. The new thing that they added in these keyboards is this light switch over here, which you can cycle through different light patterns. So it's too bright right now, so you can't really see it. So let me turn off the lights for a bit. That's much better. It's all dark now. And this is a smart illumination doing its thing. Whoop, boom, Whoop, boom. Like I don't even have to touch the keyboard and you can't really see my face right now, but uh, my face is really excited because that's pretty cool. So for the new light patterns, I'm just gonna use this keyboard over here to just demonstrate. And for the new feature, we can cycle between the different patterns using the light bulb button over here. It will also show up on your screen which mode you're in. So this is the static mode, which everyone knows it just stays on and you can adjust the brightness over here using these two buttons. This is the brightest setting. The next pattern is contrast where you have the brighter ones over here here and the keys in the middle are lighter and then you have it breathing it breathes like at this pace and then you have wave where it keeps going from side to side and then you have reactive mode where it lights up wherever I type like hello my name is Mike so it's kind of cool it's like the matrix and then you have random where it just lights up randomly which looks even more like the matrix so it's pretty cool and now we're back at static so the thing that really surprises me is that the keyboard that's turned off quite quickly when my hand isn't on it and let's turn the light back on the battery is estimated to last 15 days on a full charge with all the lights going on and stuff so it uses quite a lot of battery but if you have it turned off completely it can last up to 10 months and of course it uses a USB type C over here to charge and you can charge like have it plugged in and charging while using it and typing on it so that's not really a big problem if it does run out of a battery. Anyways the next product that got an update is the mouse and this is the MX Master 3S and this is the 3, the previous version. They look exactly the same. However, they added a new color and this is the pale gray. So this is great if you have a light colored setup and this is great if you already love what the existing one looks like. But let's not judge things by the look. There's actually a few key differences. So with the mouse, it has a new clicking mechanism which makes it a lot quieter, like 90% quieter. So this is what it sounds like before. And this is the new one. So much quieter. It's like a soft click. There's a tactile feeling as well. Versus. So this is a neat upgrade if you work with other people in the room and clicking a lot kind of annoys them. The other upgrade we're looking at is that it has a higher DPI now from 4,000 to 8,000 now. So if you want to move across the screen faster and increase the sensitivity, it can do that. And the other upgrade is that now it pairs using this Logic Bolt connector. So this is something new and it's included in the new mice and the new keyboards. Now using the new Logic Bolt along with their Logic Options Plus software is great, especially if you use the flow feature. So right now, let's move on to my desktop and I'll show you how it works. So guys, I've connected my mouse and keyboard using Logi Bolt on my PC laptop and my MacBook Pro. I'm currently connected to my MacBook Pro right now. I can move the windows and stuff. And if I wanna switch over, all I have to do is hold control on my keyboard and come over to the window side and it's connected as well. The cool thing is that I can also use a keyboard. The keyboard switches automatically as well. And you can do that over the settings over here to link the keyboard and enable that. I like to hold control while moving to the edge to switch over just so that I can prevent any accidental switching. And what's even better is that you can copy files to different devices as well using the Logitech Flow. So if I copy this wallpaper over here, Come over to Windows and paste it, Control V. That's very, very simple. I can set it as my background and boom, that looks a lot better, doesn't it? The other thing that I noticed with uh, Logi Bolt is that when you do switch over to the different device, it is a bit quicker than Bluetooth or the previous dongle that they used. And right now we are using the Logitech Options Plus and here is where you can customize everything. And I love to use the app specific customizations because I use classic a lot and for these buttons I love to use a keyboard shortcut which is command plus to zoom in and the other one I like to use command minus 
to zoom out. And I love how the shortcut buttons are just at the tip of my thumb, making editing photos in Lightroom very easy to move around in when I'm zapping away all the little dust bites out of my photos like a ninja. The other thing with the keyboard is that these are the buttons that you can customize to whatever you want. So I think the option to customize all this to your liking can really speed up your workflow in whatever that you do. For example, on the full-size keyboard, there is the screen brightness down and up over here. So we can do that as well. So if we search brightness up and down, there it is, brightness up. So we can do that instead. And when we move over to Windows, we can do the same customization over here. So we can demonstrate the brightness down and brightness up, so it works perfectly. And the other benefit of using Logibolt is that it has a super low latency response time of four milliseconds. And it's also more secure than its previous wireless connections that it used, but I don't think it's gonna replace any super competitive gaming mice. But for someone like me who plays League of Legends casually, and uh, I mean, uh, I'm like bronze two or something like that, it is more than enough. So with the new mouse and keyboard, I'm very happy to see that they included a Logibolt USB in each of them. And using the Logibolt is quite a nice upgrade in my opinion. So guys, I hope this video gave you a good understanding of what's new and what's useful to you. And if you're interested in any of these Logitech keyboard and mice, there's a link in the description for you to check out. And if you have any questions about any of these, make sure to let me know as well. And if you're still watching right now, thank you so much for supporting my videos and watching till the end. Make sure you drop a emoji with the nerdy glasses in the comments below to let me know that you watch up to this point. And of course, if you haven't already, remember to like and subscribe and turn on that notification bell to get the latest updates about my channel from YouTube. And that's it for now guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the very next video bye